So this is just to explain a little bit more about the directions of working satin stitch to try and help um, you to understand those a little bit more. So I've drawn a classic kind of leaf shape here, the sort of thing we would work very often in satin stitch. And I want to draw my suggested first stitch across at about 45 degrees and at the widest part of the shape. It's not necessarily the middle, but generally starting at the widest point. And um, when I'm working towards the base of the leaf, um, I'm going to bring the needle up on this side and take it down on this side. So bringing the needle up here and take it down. And we talked about the things that we need to do as you bring the needle up and you take it down. So the needle comes up straight, pointing towards the sky like a rocket, and we leave this very important little breathing space between the tip of the previous stitch and where the needle's emerging to make the next stitch. As the needle goes down, the needle goes down parallel to the split stitch edge, about 45 degrees to the fabric and pushing towards and slightly under the previous satin stitch. Not actually burying beneath it, but definitely pressing towards and against it. And we said that helps to draw the, um, this end of the stitch towards us this way, and it helps to push that end of the stitch that way. If I lay the pencil on here, what we're trying to do is to maintain that angle. So by bringing and uh, leaving the little gap at, at this left hand end, that's making the stitch tilt further this way, so tilting a little more steeply. By pushing the needle on this end of the stitch, it's making it steeper again. So both those things are helping to make that stitch remain steep. You've got to remember all the time that the satin stitch is fighting against you and doesn't want to do that. It wants to flatten all the time. So we're trying to keep it um, acutely angled all the way through the design. So going all the way to the end now, we try and maintain that and continue that angle. If we feel that the angle of stitch is getting flat in relation to the flow of the shape, which can happen when the shape is turning, we could put in one of those wedge insertion stitches. So a three quarter, two thirds the length of the original stitch to help to boot it round. We could put another little one in here and we can keep it turning. And we extend the stitch beyond the tip until we've got that lovely sharp point and then we might pass the needle back up underneath the satin stitch rising up through the satin to clip it off and finish. When we work the other end of the shape working towards this point we're going to reverse that we're going to come up on this side and work down on this side and continue that in the same way. We might want to make the angle a little steeper again by putting a couple of wedge stitches in and swing it back round as far as we want to, sharpening the point as much as we wish to. The same is true, and um, talking about why we do it like that, so the needle comes up straight on this side, straight to the sky. We're leaving the little gap, and if anything, that's making the stitch steeper this way. We're pressing down on this end of the stitch, pushing the needle into the point here, and that again is pressing down on that, that seesaw and making the angle steeper. The stitch is always trying to resist us and flatten, and we're trying to keep it pushed back. So the needles from either side of the shape working, pushing into these acute angles here and here, help to keep that angle steep and push it into line, assisted by the fact that we're leaving a gap on this side and a gap on this side, pulling again that angle round and a little more steeply. If we reverse that and we change the direction of working and pressed on this end and this end, you can see very, very quickly that the angle will flatten. And that would result in this kind of effect. So if we draw the shape again and we put our um, starting angle across, very quickly we would get this happening, which is a common problem in satin stitch and we end up with short little stitches and we can't get to a point because we're trying to use these little short fat stitches to get to the end. And that results from pressing on the wrong end of the stitch and not leaving our gap as we come up. And when I've taught a class of, of uh, 50 people how to do this um, in one session, some will get it straight away, some won't, some will do it the wrong way around initially, it's easy to get confused and automatically the ones that haven't followed this, this rule will end up with flat satin stitch like this. 
Um, so it really, really does work. It takes practice. There's lots of um, things in satin stitch that you need to practice. And I can't emphasize enough that the more practice you do, the better it will come. It's worth drawing a shape like this on a scrap of fabric, bit of calico, and practicing with something like stranded cotton or cotton abroda or floche. Um, having a go, having a go until it just starts to come more naturally. If we now draw the same shape again, but we decide that we're going to start at this angle, which is perfectly fine. There is no rule to say that you need to work a shape bottom left to top right or top right to bottom left. It just doesn't matter at all. Um, if we are choosing that angle to begin with, which is just a design decision, we may feel it looks nicer, it flows better around the shape. Always have a go if you're doing a more complex shape at following the angle round the shape and see if you um, feel it's going to continue to look pleasing all the way round. Um, when we work this one, we're working up towards the tip, we're going to come up on this side and go down on this side. How did I know that? Well, we can look for that obtuse angle. We always bring the needle up on the side where we have the obtuse angle and take the needle down on the side where we have the acute angle. So we know we go that way. On this side, coming down, we're going to reverse that and bring the needle up on the obtuse angle here and take the needle down on the side of the acute angle here. And always where that acute angle is, we get that nice slot for the needle to pop into like this, pushing along the side into that V and pushing along the side in like this. Another way to remember that is to think about the Z rule. So if we draw the shape again and we decide we're going to choose that angle to begin with, if I make a Z shape between my stitch angle and my split stitch edges, I know that my needle will always go down into the V's of the Z. And that's a rule that's very, very useful to remember. So if I just check, we can see it there. So if I draw the shape again, and I make the design decision to go this way, and I make a Z out of my split stitch edges with my um, satin stitch direction, my needle will always go down into the V's of that Z. Like that, so that's a foolproof rule. If we draw a shape, let's move that down a little, if we draw a shape going this way, common in monogramming to have wiggly shapes like this, and we might choose to go in that direction. Again, I make a Z, and I'm going to follow through like this, and like this on that side. So very useful to remember. If we now look at this example here, this is the shape here that um, we were working in the sample and we'll follow that through here. So we're going to put our 45 degree angle across the shape. When we worked down to the base, we came up on the top edge and down on the bottom. And we can check that by putting our Z in place and there we are, working through to the bottom as we did following that Z rule and then coming up to the top, working in here and pushing in the other direction and out to the tip. And again, if we put our marker on there and we look at those two needles pressing in, that's making the angle steeper all the time, which is what we want. If we do the opposite, it's going to make that angle flatter and we don't want that. We move to the leaf here and we started by coming up here beyond the end of the satin that we'd already completed in this leaf, so it's easier to come up. And we took a 45 degree angle across. Towards the bottom, let's just put our Z in again there. We know that we're going this way, same as the leaf above. And from the top, we're coming in that way. And that's helped by starting at that point because also it's easier for these stitches to descend into this groove between the two leaves rather than trying to emerge in there. So we've got that extra help there. When we move to this leaf on the opposite side of the design, um, in the original design um, I did the directions this way and this way. So we'll look at this one here. We'll make our Z and we're working towards the bottom first 
and so we're going to be working like this and at the top we're going to be working like that. In the bottom one here the same is true so we're going to be working in like this and then we're going to be working in like this here. Okay? Now, that should clarify how to plan which direction to work in um, and how to understand which, which way to work um, on the top or bottom of your shape and why that is and why that helps you to maintain the angle. Beyond that planning stage, which is always a good idea to draw out on your design. So do some sketching first on the design. A, choose the direction you think would look good um, to um, give the best flow to the design. Then look at which direction you're going to work the stitches in using the Z rule or the obtuse and acute angle rule. Then when it comes to stitching them, remember that on the side you come up, you leave a small space and your needle rises to the sky like a rocket. And when it descends, it points in towards the previous satin stitch, the needle's parallel to the split stitch edge and is about 45 degrees raised from the fabric, not too shallow, not too high. And we refer to that as the fundamental needle angle and it's superbly important throughout embroidery, particularly in white work, which is so unforgiving. If you don't get your satin smooth in white work, it really shows up, a bit more forgiving in coloured work. Um, but it's an incredibly important and useful um, discipline to learn throughout your stitching and hence why lots of practice is really, really helpful. And I hope that's given you a little bit more understanding.